chart, but we're going over it together. So, yang yun yo, we're good. Okay, just on your yas, make sure that it's that direction. Okay, you want to tilt it a little bit more. See how this is tilted over this way? It's hard to tell what it is supposed to be when it's like that. It's supposed to be tilted more in this direction. I've known some of these are especially awkward to write if you're a lefty. Sorry. <laughs> that could be part of the reasons Japanese parents usually try to retrain their lefty kids to make them righties. <laughs> so, Does yeah. It work? Apparently, most Japanese people are right handed. So, yeah, they, um, they actually will, like when the kids are really little and they start having a, a preference for the left hand. They'll just keep taking the, the pencil or the chopsticks or whatever, whatever out of their left hand and putting it in the right hand until the kid finally just gives in. <laughs> it works, however, it's not good for the child's development. Yeah. There's a few cultures that do that. Yeah, yeah, there's some cultures that do that. We used to do it years ago. Yeah, yeah. My, my dad was supposed to have been a lefty. And his sister decided to retrain him. <laughs> but anyway, so... So, kya pyu pyo, kya pyu pyo, kya pyu pyo, good. Um, make sure that your yo is smaller than the thing it's combining with. Otherwise, this looks like pyo instead of pyo. Okay, so you just want to make sure that it's somewhere around a half to three quarters of the full size instead of full size, and a little bit lower. That also helps to make it clear that it's meant to be the combination rather than two separate full size letters. So meow you meow is good. Meow you meow good. Wheat, wet and wool, good. Ta ti te so ti and fa fi pu fe fo. I forgot to leave this one blank because I forgot pu was one of the options. So Did I leave anything out? Um, any questions about how to write any of those guys? So I will fix this and re-upload it to the computer so that if you're wanting to download this chart for practice, you'll be able to remember to do a few. Okay. So, and in case you were wondering, yes, this chart and the other charts for katakana and hiragana, the blanks, are all available on Canvas. They're currently in the file called, the, or the um, module called warm-up activities. So if you look uh, in the warm-ups section under modules, you'll find these blank charts that you can practice. You left out of, uh, You're right. 
I completely left out the V's, didn't I? Yeah. I thought you were just going to make a note chart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me make a note of that as well. I'm, I already put a note that I need to add the space for Q, so I also need to add the V's. Okay. Thanks for pointing that out. I don't know how I missed that, but I missed it. I think in the transference from, you know, looking at it done vertically and I wanted to switch it to the, you know, or done horizontally or that I wanted to switch it to the traditional format, I lost track of where I was up to. Okay. So, what am I sure? Okay, so I'm going to leave that for now. And we're going to do some katakana review again. So, is everybody feeling pretty confident about katakana? Do you, do you guys want us to review the single letters first, or do you feel like we could jump right into words? How many people want to review single letters before we do words? Okay. Enough people want to do that. We'll do that first. Okay. We'll do the individual letters, and we'll do the combination letters. And I'm just kind of shuffling these a little bit because I don't want them to be the exact same order they were last time we did it. <laughs> okay. Let me start with new. new. Ma. know it instantly, that's okay. Say it anyway, even if you're after other people, because it's good practice to see it and verbalize it both and hear it. If you're getting auditory input, your own um, voice and the visual, that combination is more effective than just using one sense to try to memorize something. So this one is?
shoe. She. Oh, sorry, that's se. Reading upside down is not always good. Se. Si. Sa. Cha. Sho. Je. Yagyu-ryo wasn't up there either? No. Wow. What? Oh, there my time. Oh, it was behind <laughs> me. You couldn't see it. <laughs> okay, guys, I was pretty sure I remembered those at least. That's okay. Okay, let's try some vocabulary drills. Um, th these are actually, some of these are actual words. Some of them are... Um, Names of students from a previous semester. I didn't get around to doing your names yet, so but we just did them on the board yesterday. So I think everybody remembers how to do their names. So I didn't get a chance to sort through. So we'll we'll focus more on the real words. Igirisu. Anyone remember what it means? England. Yes. Britain. Okay. America. America. Everybody should know what that one means. <laughs> no excuses for not knowing that one. <laughs> Any questions there? Everybody knows what that one means, right? Highway. <laughs> Can you have tell? Highway. It's obvious, yes? Highway. Okay. <laughs> it's fun when they sound just like the English word, right? Then it's easy. Johnson. Yeah. So that's a common last name, right? Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and doesn't that kind of help though to see the contrast? The, the slight contrast is there. Yeah. It's very slight, but it's there. So it's kind of helpful to look at one like this and say, okay, yeah, I can actually tell that. It's an mm, a so an mm. See how it is mostly about the angle here. Also, this seems to be a bit straighter, and this seems to be a bit more curved. Well, I was doing my flashcards, but in the perpendicular, it was almost like an X. Okay. Like yeah, this is almost like that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The other one's angled like a lot. Yeah, this is more of an angle. So, does that help? A little check. Yeah. Yeah, and the check mark is a little bit more exaggerated in this font than some of the other fonts. So, the fonts that are most annoying are like the, the bubble script fonts because they just they do away with all the um, hooks mm -hmm. on those, and then it's really hard to tell. Uh, can you guess? 
guess what name that is? Plummer. Plummer. Yeah. Have you have you heard? Yeah, that's a, a last name. You know, Christopher Plummer is an actor. You know, Plumma. That's that's how that name gets rendered. So. Yeah. Sentenza. So again, that's a name. You know, that could come up. You might know somebody with that name, so now you know how to deal with it. Yeah, Elizabeth. Yeah, so oh, again, Elizabeth. Yeah. Notice that THs convert to S's or Z's, depending on whether it's the um, soft or the hard TH. Okay. Oh, this is somebody who's in my other class now. Sandin. Sandin. Yeah, that's an unusual name, Sandlin. Some, somebody in here had their um, um, OPI with him. I don't, oh, it was you, okay. I couldn't remember. Jeremy. Yeah, again, a common name, right? Jeremy. Jeremy, right? Joseph. Yeah, Joseph. Joseph. Yeah, so again, a fairly common name, right? He actually, it turns out, goes by. Joel. <laughs> Easy, right? <laughs> Coco Beach is one possible way to do Coco Beach. Um, you could do Cocoa, but that's not as close to how they actually pronounce it. So it's kind of a toss up which one they would do. You know, Coco Beach. <laughs> How many people live there? Palm of Bay. <laughs> I'm moving there next month. Are you? <laughs> so, yeah. It's useful to know how to render local place names, right? Mendelbaum. Yeah. Mendelbaum. Mendelbaum. And this one applies to both here and the city in Australia. Mm. Same pronunciation in English, same pronunciation in Katakana. Present, as in gift, presentable. They use this word in Japanese. It's a real word. Okay. <laughs> Venus. Venus. Yeah, Venus. Like, you know, like the planet or that famous statue. <laughs> was it a painting? Hmm? I thought it was a There's a painting, too, I think. It was a yeah. Yeah, Davis. So again, common surname, right? Davis. 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 Okay. If you can sound these out, you're good on Katakana. Yeah. Duetto. Exactly what it sounds like. Two people singing together, two people playing instruments together. Duetto. Everybody's favorite. Um, <laughs> Mati. 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 Right? <laughs> Wait, does that, a, does that mean a party or yeah. a patty thing? How would you say patty? As in like oh, patty. as in like a, a patty melt? Mm -hmm. um, they'd probably do patty oh. with a small two in there okay. instead of party. As in Philippine Jin would be a Filipino person, or Philippine by itself is the country name. Philippine Go could be a reference to any of the languages of the Philippines. I mean, I think to specify, they would name it in Katakana, so like Tagalog, something like that. James, James, so James, you know, another common name, right? Yeah, Dandenong, Dandenong. good sounding out, Dandenong. Not a common surname, but it was a surname from somebody in my class last semester. <laughs> right. Oh, blank sheet. 
easy one. Ten. Ten. <laughs> B. B. And again, the, the name Lee. B. We've got to remember That's that because the there's no um, th there's no differentiation between L's and R's in Japanese, L name and R name words both end up like this. So, you know, if it's you know something like I, I had a friend named Rianne, for example. <laughs> yeah, Re Rianne and Leanne end up the same name in Japanese. <laughs> You know, or like Marissa and Melissa. Those can be <laughs> interesting. Pizza. Pizza. Yeah, pizza. Everybody's favorite food, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and pun. Pun. something to go with your pizza, <laughs> right? <laughs> Bread. <laughs> Some starch with your starch. <laughs> yes, car. They, yes, they have other words for car in Japanese, but Ka is one of them. Okay. Can you guess? This one's abbreviated. It came from toilet. Yeah. Toilet. Toilet. So you know, if you if you need the restroom in Japan, toilet wa doko desu ka means where's the restroom. Toilet. Now that would be with a chi instead of bg. Oh, th this is again a, a not so common surname. Mm -hmm. Somebody in my other class. Yeah. And I wasn't sure how he pronounced it, so I did two versions because <laughs> I had a lot of time <laughs> prepping for last semester. Again, a less common surname, Boko. Boko. Keen. A, a more common surname, right? Keen. Pile. Again, a, a not so common surname. Pile. Yeah. Yeah. Walla. I think the last name was Waller in English. Walla. That's how it gets rendered. Common name. Yeah, it sounds like karma, but I think karma. karma. What was her name? It was something close to that, but it wasn't actually karma. <laughs> but Karoi. Yeah, her name was Chloe, and the choices were either Kuroi or Karoi, and Kuroi sounds like the color black, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, act, no, this is actually a full size A. It's hard to tell, but it's Sierra. Sierra. As in Sierra. Sierra. That's a, another popular name these days. Cocoa. Cocoa. Cocoa, which can be cocoa as in the city. It can also mean cocoa as in the drink. Cocoa. Every time I see it, I want to turn the clothes around. <laughs> So this would just be another possible rendition of Coco the city, if you wanted to make it different from Coco the drink. Meru. Sounds like mail. It actually means email. They, they have a, a different Japanese word for snail mail, and meru means email. Home. Again, shortened from platform. Home means the platform where you wait to board a train in Japan. So home is a word you hear all the time because everybody uses public transit in Japan. So that's a good one to know because even like the announcements on the train might say something about home. Yeah, wine. Exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> the drink, not the tone of voice. <laughs> Page. Can you guess? Page, yeah. So if I say, for example, 
possible rendering of Venus? Is the, the V construction, the ooh, ten ten to make a V sound, is relatively recent in Japanese history. So there are a number of words like violin that sometimes still get written with the B sound instead of the V. What to eat with if you don't like chopsticks. <laughs> to check something, check procedure. And I think they sometimes use it for asking for the check in a restaurant as well. Although there are other words for that. This is a character in your textbooks too, Robotosan. Okay. And so is this. Miyari. 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 Okay, if you're ordering in the in the restaurant, you need the menu. menu. And jeans. Jeans is what a lot of people wear. Okay, and I don't know why I had menu twice. But I'll put that aside because we don't really need it twice. Halloween. Yes. Everybody's favorite excuse to eat candy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Common word for exchange students in Japan. Homestay. Homestay, yeah. Another common word if you're visiting Japan. A lot of people do homestay. Fashion. Yeah, fashion. <laughs> yeah. Major for one of my students in the other class. <laughs> Sweden, yes, yeah, Sweden. Sweden is how they pronounce it in Japanese. And notice that Japanese does not care where you break the word. See that? Just whatever fits. <laughs> Sweden. <laughs> yes. They call it that in Japan. <laughs> if you go to McDonald's, that's what you can order. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Oh, this was another unusual monster tag. Monster tag. Oh. So. Um, right. McDonald's. <laughs> Everybody knows where that is, right? <laughs> Had people commute here from Titusville at times. Less common surname. They actually have a hyphenated name. Olson Hodges. Oh. Olson Hodges. 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 Yeah. So some of these I'm going to actually sort out and not use anymore. Satellite. Beach. Yes. Where my husband works. <laughs>
Yeah, close to family, close to family need. So if you're doing a home stay, you're living with a close to family need. And you might get home sick. <laughs> <laughs> Disneyland, whether in Tokyo or LA, <laughs> or Hong Kong. Is there one in Hong Kong and one in Paris now? Hi, mineral water. So if you like plain water that's not carbonated and you don't want juice or milk or sake or whatever, this is a way to make sure that's what you're actually getting. <laughs> if you prefer bottled water. If you just want tap water, you can just ask for mizu. Yeah. Okay. That's for bottled water. Yeah, minugaru wota would be bottled water. Place name in case somebody's from there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Indian Harbor. Okay. Yeah, Indian Harbor Beach. Yeah, Indian Harbor Beach. Oh, okay. Again, they don't they don't care where you break the words in Japanese, so it all just kind of runs together. Oh, and I had. Oh, kare and ramen. I forgot to cut these apart, so I will. Side to cut later. <laughs> Another thing you might order in a restaurant. Oh, these are again two separate words, top and bottom. And cola. Yeah, so two drinks you might like. I'll separate those for the next time. Okay, yeah, for some reason I have a few here that didn't get separated. So. Sarada, healthy food, <laughs> and salad, salad. Sarada, okay. and juice, something to drink. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, miruku is another drink. Katen is what you put on your windows. Oh, curtains. Curtains. <laughs> Katen. Oh, I was thinking curtains. Like oh, milk carton. Oh, milk carton, yeah. Actually, they, that's possible, but I don't. Carton. I think they would do carton yeah. for carton. Yeah. One of those guys. And keshigomu is the eraser for pencil. aren't that many words purely in hiragana when it's made for a native speaker audience. A lot of what you see on the signs in Japan is either katakana or kanji. You don't see as much pure hiragana. Okay, so how are we doing with katakana, everybody feeling fairly comfortable with it? Okay, so we're ready to look at some lesson two vocab. So this is going to be a combination, sort of. of oh, and I think menu was actually one of your vocab words. So it may be that that was supposed to be in here. That may be why I had menu typed up twice. I'm going to go ahead and put this one. So let's look at these, and if you know what it is, it's 
first let's read it in Japanese, and then if you know what it is in English, say so, and if you don't, I'll tell you guys. Okay. Haban, anybody? Bad. Bad, yes. Upside down. Screw it. Desk. Isu is chair. Pen. Obvious. <laughs> Soba, udon, ramen are basically the three major categories of noodles in Japanese. Yeah. Not counting spaghetti. <laughs> Kare. Kare. Any guess? Curry. Curry, yes. Popular dish in Japan. Yeah. They make it differently from India. Misen. Generally not nearly as spicy. <laughs> oh. Misen. Misen. 2000. 2000. Then is 1,000. Okay, this one's really hard to pin down. <laughs> Zomo by itself can mean too many things. Its most literal translation is very. So when you put it with like arigato, domo arigato is like thank you very much. Okay. Domo by itself sometimes means thanks also, but in other contexts it sometimes means other things. So you just kind of have to listen for it and pay attention to the context to get a feel for how it's being used then. Dozo is often translated as please, but it's really more like here you are, here you go, please take this. That kind of a please, as in please have it. Okay, it's not please as in please give me something. That's a different word. Okay, so dozo is here you go, that kind of please. Okay. Ja. Ja. Well then, yeah, like, well, okay. Hi. Hi or expensive. So it can be high as in tallness or high as in high price. Takai works for both of those concepts. Ikura. How much, yes. So ikura desu ka is asking how much is it. Ten. Yes, yen. Yeah. Notice that there's no ye sound in Japanese, right? So it's actually n in modern Japanese. Oh, yeah. yeah. We can guess that there was probably a ye sound at some point in Japan's past, because otherwise, where did the romaji spelling for yen come from? But it's probably been gone for several hundred years, that ye sound. Majors now. Korea, yeah, Hanboku. And if you wanted to say Korean language, you would say Hi, Hanboku Go. And if you wanted to say Korean person or people, Hanboku Jin. Yes. So it works just like that. Okay. Igui suit. Same thing for people. In British people would be Igui Jin. Obviously, they don't use it for gold because we've got a different word, a gold for English. Yeah. America. America. Yeah. So the country, and if you mean a person from America, America. Jean. Okay. 
And note that the gene part, that suffix that makes it such and such people, that gene has a kanji. So if you don't know the kanji yet, you write it in hiragana. You don't write it in katakana, even if the country name part was in katakana. Ginko okay. is a bank. Hon. or clock. Toke is a general word for timepiece. It doesn't necessarily imply size or where you keep it. Kisatsu. Right. Newspaper. Shinbun. Right. Jisho. Dictionary. Yes. Jeans. Jeans. Wallet, yes. Saifu, place you keep your money. Kutsu, shoes. Kaban, bag. Is it? Yeah, I, I, I don't know how I ended up with repeats of some of these. Kasa, umbrella. Enkutsu, pencil. Like um, like a breaded pork cutlet, and then they slice it into long skinny pieces. And depending on the region of Japan you're eating in, it may very well come with a miso-based sauce or a um, soy sauce-based sauce, either already on it or on the side for you to add for yourself. Sometimes it also will come like laid over a bit of rice. Fish. Yeah. Delicious. Yes. So, and you'll note that in Japanese, people don't talk about the food being good. They talk about it being oishi, delicious. So the food is oishi or not. Oishi, but they don't use good and bad as adjectives to talk about food usually. Not when you're talking about the taste. Dare means who. So, dare desu ka? Who is it? Okay. Asoko means like way over there, far from me and far from the person I'm speaking with. Asoko. Doko is asking where. Doko desu ka? Where is it? So, toilet wa doko desu ka? Where's the toilet? Asoko desu. <laughs> it's over there. Right. Soko is there near you. Meaning, if I'm the speaker and I'm, at, I'm talking about uh, where Himena's coffee is, and I can tell her, soko desu. It's there near her. Okay? If she were asking about something that was over here near me, she would use soko. And in response, I would use koko because it's close to me. Okay, so soko is. Koko. So koko is here. Soko is there near you, near the person you're speaking to, okay? And then asoko is far from both people in the conversation. Okay? Dono is which, yes, as in which one. And ano is that one way over there. Okay, and then sono over there near the listener. And 
tunnel here near the speaker. Okay. Dore is another version of which, and sore is that near um, the listener again. And let's see, we're going to run through other vocab real quick, and then we're going to talk about those concepts. Kore sore are, kono sono ano, and koko soko asoko. Th those concepts can be very confusing. So this one is obviously menu, menu for the 50th time. Chikensha <laughs> <laughs> is a bicycle. Kisaten is coffee shop. Tosokan? Library. Library. By the way, cafe and kisaten are similar places, but very often they'll use kisaten to talk about some place that seems more Japanese or more traditional in its atmosphere. And cafe is usually very European like style. Huh? Like a Starbucks? Starbucks would probably be called kind of the cafe, but also like French style. Cafe are very popular in Japan. They, they're fascinated with European culture and Western culture in general. So they like French style cafes because that's kind of something that France is known for. And American style restaurants for, say, hamburgers because that's something America is known for. So, okay. Got it. That over far from both of us. Yudin Joku is a. Post office. Chugoku. China. China. Yeah. So, and again, Chugoku Go would be Chinese, Chinese language, language, and Chinese people would be Chugoku Jin. Computer. Computer. There you go. Mokasan is mother. Motosan, right. notice the spelling, is. Father. Irashai Welcome. Welcome to the store. Yeah, one of my other students dubbed this the most heard word in Japan when he was visiting there for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> because every shop you go even close to, somebody's <laughs> there to say, Irashai <laughs> Just in case you wanted to come in and thought maybe you wouldn't be welcome. <laughs> Everywhere you go, and if you go into one of the major department stores, every employee that you encounter will say, Irashaimase. Even if you're not stopping to talk to them, you're just walking by them. Irashaimase, with a bow, <laughs> every single time. Yeah, yeah, super friendly, and they're just, they're very highly trained. They, they have to always welcome the customers, and they have to use very high level polite speech. So um, yeah, it gets pretty interesting um, for beginners because you go into a department store and you want help buying something and you try to use your very rudimentary Japanese to get help and they keep answering you in this really highfalutin formal language that you haven't studied yet and you're lost and they're not allowed to downgrade to regular speech because that's considered rude to the customer. So they can actually get in trouble with their boss if they switch to a manner of speech that you're more familiar with. Is there a way to like ask them nicely to tone it down or no? You can try. It depends on, honestly, it depends on whether or not the manager's around <laughs> and whether or not the manager is super strict about it or would be understanding that, oh, you're talking to a guy and he's a beginner. I'll give you a break, you know. But even McDonald's, they are trained to use that kind of language to greet customers and talk to the customers. You, you don't get to start working in McDonald's in Japan unless you've taken the training for how to talk politely to people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so blank o negaishimasu means please do me the favor of blank. So you can put a noun in here, and you're asking, basically, please give me that noun. So if you're ordering in a restaurant, for example, mizu o onegaishimasu would be, please give me water. Okay. Yeah. Blank o kudasai. And 
same deal here. It's another way to say, please give me something. Kudasai is teeny tiny bit less formal than onegaishimasu, but also the contexts are different. Kudasai is almost always asking for, in, in this structure, it's almost as, always asking for a thing, whereas onegaishimasu could be asking for a service or a favor. Kudasai is usually also used a lot for like, please eat, please come, please stand up, those kinds of things. Verb combinations, which we'll learn second semester. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, not thank you. That would be in katakana. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 300, yes. So notice that hyaku changes to byaku in certain combinations. And if you're ever uncertain what the proper combinations are, there's a chart way in the back of your book that shows you all different kinds of number possibilities and which ones shift their pronunciation in which combinations. Yon hyaku is 400. Gokaku, 500. Rokkaku, 600. Notice that the roku changes to rok and the kaku changes to kaku. Nana kaku, 700. Kaku, another pronunciation shift for 800. Kyuhaku, 900. Sun Zen, 3,000. Yonsen, notice that Yonsen does not shift the pronunciation, but Sun Zen does. I don't know why. Gosen, <laughs> Go 5,000. Roksen, 6,000. Nanasen, 7,000. Hassen, 8,000. Kyusen is 9,000. Ichiman is 10,000, or as the exchange students in Japan always like to call it, one man. <laughs> because when you start having to switch back and forth, it gets really confusing. Ichiman and, and above, there's this disconnect because we have 10,000. We use two existing words as a combination, they have a new vocabulary word for that same concept, that same number amount. So, ichiman. So, quite literally, I'm not kidding, when we used to talk in English among ourselves about how much money we were spending on things, if it was anything over uh, Q sen, if it was ichiman or miman or sanman, we just talked about it. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, how, how much did you pay for that thing? Oh yeah, it was only Ichiman, it wasn't bad. You know, <laughs> we didn't convert it anymore because it was too annoying. <laughs> so, and I'm going to show you guys a trick for how to deal with higher numbers so that you don't get totally confused. Miman, Miman is 20,000. Yep. Sanman, 30,000. Miman, 40,000. Goman, 50,000. Nokoman, 60,000. Nanoman, 70,000. Hachiman, 80,000. Kuman, 90,000. And Juman, 100,000. <laughs> Tenman is 100,000. Juman. Okay, so you can see where it would get annoying. Right? And then, of course, you go to Kakuman, would 100 man is a million. Because yeah. remember, Juman was 100,000, right? What comes after 100,000? The next place value is 1 million. So Kakuman is 1 million. See why it gets annoying if you have to keep converting back and forth between English and Japanese? It's much easier if you can just get used to the numbers in Japanese. <laughs> Senman. Senman, 10 million. Okay. And Teishoku, getting out of numbers.
numbers for a little while. Teishoku is, they call it set menu. It's one of these dishes that usually comes on this beautiful little black lacquer tray with multiple little cute dishes on it. And one little bowl holds your rice and another little bowl holds your miso soup. And a nice little plate holds, say, some sushi. And another teeny little plate holds the pickled vegetables. And maybe there's one more plate on there that holds some other little dish. And teishoku are set menus. They're predetermined. This teishoku number one includes this, 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 this. This teishoku number two includes these things. You do not get to mix and match. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, unlike American menus where you can substitute things and have choices of things, Japanese menus are always just, you, you get it the way it is on the menu. You don't get to make alterations. <laughs> and that's just the way they're used to it. They find our many choices to be utterly confusing and disconcerting when they try to come here. And my English classes, all they ever wanted to learn for restaurant language, they always wanted to know how to say, I'll have what he's having, I'll have what she's having. Because that's what they wanted to do. They were going to make the first person, whoever was the most outgoing, order, and then they were all going to just say, I'll have what he's having, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> because they were just not interested in having to make all those decisions. <laughs> it's a cultural difference. They found those decision-making things, you know, which dressing do you want on your salad? Do you want soup or salad? You know, do you want this side, this side, or that side? You know, too many choices. Yeah. Were you allowed to edit it, like, at all? Say you're allergic to onions or something and you just wanted no onions on it? You can ask for, like, don't put X in there, and they can usually accommodate that, but don't try to substitute and get totally confused. <laughs> So you, you can say no onions, or you can say no ginger, or whatever, but don't try to say no ginger and extra mushrooms, please, because it's not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> They're just not used to getting special orders. special orders. They don't customize stuff normally. Okay. Oh, spaghetti. Is this a repeat also? Uh, no. No. Okay, spaghetti. Okay. Udon, another kind of noodle. Sandwich. Sandwich. Ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. Ramen. Togi. Yeah. means um, black tea. The um, the tea that um, is more like what we're used to if you get hot tea in this country, most of the time if you get hot tea in this country, it's dark, right? But that's kocha. If, if you ask for ocha, that is usually gonna be Japanese green tea. And then if you ask for matcha, people are gonna be surprised because that's the very thick, frothy green tea that they use in the tea ceremony. It's a very strong, bitter taste. And as part of the sea ceremony, they always use matcha and sweets. They always have some kind of little candy that's usually just about pure sugar. It's like decorated sugar cubes, basically. <laughs> and the contrast, the extreme contrast of the very bitter matcha and the very sweet candy is supposed to be like part of the sensory experience of doing tea ceremony. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, juice, obvious, yes. Milk, also pretty obvious. Kyoshitsu is this room where we are now. Classroom, kyoshitsu. Kyo is a kanji that means education, shitsu means room. So it's literally an education room. Kyoshitsu. Kokuban. Kokuban is literally black board. So, kokuban. Dengi literally means electricity, but they also use it for electric lights. So, 
Binky would, in this case, be the lights on the ceiling. Binky. Uh, Cotton. Curtain. Curtain, yeah, which we don't have any of in this room. We don't have a window. <laughs> Dishow. Dishow. Dictionary. Anybody know what that meant? Yeah. Did you get it? You understand? So I use this a lot. Or the other form is which is also do you understand? The sta ending makes it sound like past tense. The su ending makes it present tense, but they're somewhat interchangeable in the context of classroom language. So and, yes, I understood. Okay. I don't get it. I don't understand. Okay. So use these. Okay. I'm going to ask frequently. Okay. Very useful. You could eat. Please say it slowly. You want to memorize this one before you get to Japan. You're going to want to use it multiple times per conversation with some people. <laughs> some people talk so fast. They, there's a word for it in Japanese, hayakuchi, fast mouth. <laughs> some people are really hayakuchi, and you just constantly have to tell them to slow down. is please say it one more time. Mo is again ichi one do time. So again one time itte is say kudasai is please. So again one time say please. <laughs> but mo ichido itte kudasai again super useful language to know because you might feel like you almost understood what they said but you need to hear it one more time to really be sure. Or you might have just not heard them clearly the first time you needed them to repeat it again. But if you say this, instead of just wakarimasen, then they'll probably repeat it for you in Japanese. If you say wakarimasen, they're likely to switch to English if their English is good enough. Or say it a completely different way in Japanese if they don't speak good English, which might just confuse you more if you felt like you kind of understood the first one they said. So, もう一度 言ってください. Please say it again. It's really useful. ちょっと待ってください. Please wait a minute. Yeah, please wait a little bit. Right? Again, very useful. You know, especially if your friend is like way ahead of you in the train station and you're losing them in the crowd. ちょっと待ってください. <laughs> Please listen. Yes, please look at page 10. Notice the, tr um, the pronunciation shift for ju to ju-te-ji. So, like I said before, a number of, um, a number of suffixes that follow numbers force a pronunciation shift in the number, as well as the first syllable of that suffix word in, at times. So the chart for how to keep track of all those pronunciation shifts is like the next to last pages in your book. There's this handy little chart back here. It categorizes the um, the suffixes that can follow numbers by the syllable they start with, the sound they start with, and then it, it gives you the pronunciations of the numbers when combined with those suffixes. Okay? So you've got ones that are regular, they use the expected pronunciations all the time. 
and then where it shows, shows the shifts of the second to last page. There. The one before that. Thanks. Page before that. Yeah. Fine. There you go. See it? Two pages of nothing but here are all the pronunciation shifts for all the different vocabulary that are taught in either this book or the second book in the series. So it gives you a lot of information. But you can just look at the bottom and find, for example, you want to see how haku shifts. So you look across the top, you see there are two columns that do H's. Look down at the bottom, find the one that does 100, haku, which is the one that shifts it from H to T sometimes and B other times. And then you can see that, okay, well, haku for 100 doesn't actually take an ichi normally, so kyaku you don't have to worry about. It's just going to be kyaku by itself. Ni kyaku stays the same. San byaku, it shifts to a B, it tells you right there. Then yon kyaku, go kyaku are blank because they don't shift. And then ro kyaku shifts to a P. Nana kyaku stays normal. Ha kyaku shifts again. Then kyu kyaku stays normal. And then ju kyaku or ji kyaku are two options depending on the region of the country where you're visiting. Ju kyaku is probably the well, no, never mind. Kyaku. Yeah, kyaku would be uh, sen. So it shifts to sen. So that's irrelevant for kyaku. It, it applies to like jukiki and jukbon, those other ones. So if it doesn't apply because it's a number word like kyaku, you don't have to worry about that category. But for the other ones in that same category, that's how the pronunciation would shift. Okay. But does that chart make sense? Does everybody get the idea for that chart? So you get good use out of that chart if you remember it's there. Because there are going to be lots of places where you're going to want it. Okay. So I promised we would talk a little bit about kore sore are and kono sono ano. So let's look at, let's see. Okay, じゃあ。オッケー、71ページを見ましょう。71ページ。being used in context. Who wants to read example one? I need a friend and a you. Who wants to read example one out loud for us? Okay. Okay. Kimena san can read a friend and the one labeled you. How about Ryan? Okay, so do you see how, if you're looking at the pictures, Minasan is where it says friend, Ryanasan is where it says you, so Himena is pointing at something that's closer to Ryan and saying, so do you want and he's answering about something that's close to him, so he's saying, 
or do I append this? You see how that works? Mm -hmm. Okay, one more example with two different people so we can get the hang of it. How about um, Ben and Will? Okay. Yep, and Ben answers, or Will answers rather. Hi. Okay, so you get the idea how those work? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to have people just take turns and we're going to kind of go around the room in order by number. So for example, Marianne san is going to ask as if she is you and Johnny's going to answer from the point of view of the friend regarding number one. Okay. Number Ichiban. Number number one in the, the that circle, yes. So you're the girl and you're asking what is this about number one? What is this? Yeah. bike is close to me. Right. The bike is close to you and you're asking what is it and he's going to teach you the Japanese word for it. Okay. So, um, kore wa nan desu ka? And you're answering from his perspective. So this is closer to her, not as close to you. So you're going to use sore wa. Sore wa. Bicycle. Somebody help him out. Jitensha. Jitensha. So they were Jitensha desu. Hi. So they were Jitensha desu. Ii Now you're going to take the perspective of this one for number two and you're going to ask Kimi san what it is and she's going to tell you the Japanese word for hack. Okay. Right. Go ahead. Well, it's near you, so you're going to use kore. Kore, okay. Yeah. Kore wa nan desu ka? Eight, 
home home this. Okay. Is that? Yeah, that works. Home or Kyokuso, but I don't think they taught you Kyokuso yet, so home works for now. Okay. Okay, so the next one is Kyuban of nine. Yes, you're asking John. Let me find my place again. Nanaju ichi peji. Nana. Nanaju ichi peji. Hi. Okay. So, Cuban. Nope. Okay, so the one on this guy. Um, well, it, since he's doing Kore, I guess they're near him, so you would answer with Sore. Okay. Sore wa kuchu das. Hi. Okay. Sore wa kuchu das. Okay. Ja, ju ichiban. She, she said sorewa, so it must be no close to you. So you answer with korewa. Sorewa. Korewa. Toki. Yes. Hi. Okay, that's net. Hi. Ja, Juniban. Sorewa. Nan desu ka? Korewa. Shinbi desu. Hi. Ii desu ne. Wakarimasu ka? So, um, does that give everybody a feel for how kore and sore work in context? Everybody okay with those? Okay. Um, we kind of skipped over numbers, but I wanted to go back and catch numbers a little bit. Um, let's go orally through the first ones, and then when we get to the higher numbers, I want to show you something on the board. So, Maku-san, um, Part A no A on Oshimas. Reading the numbers of the previous page. Let's flip back. Rokuju Q Peiji. So I'm asking how much it is. Back one more. Rokuju Q Peiji. Can you see the um, exercise for reading numbers? Let's just review. So 34 would be. Um, Sanju Yon. Hi, Sanju Yon. Hi, Ja B. Ben-san? Roku-ju-nana. Roku-ju-nana. Hai. Ja, C. Ben-san? Hai, so this. Nui-an-san? D. Kyu-ju-kyu. Kyu-ju-kyu desu. Hai. Kyu-ju-kyu. Kyu-ju-kyu. Hai. So it's the Johnny-san, E. That's 
We can go that high, right? So continue this thing underneath. So this place value would be what? Ju. Ju, okay. So we just go, we don't have to say the mon part here. Just add the ju. So this one would be another kaku, right? This would be another sen, okay? And over here, they would actually come up with a new vocabulary word, oku. We don't need to worry about that. If you're not buying a house in Japan, you probably won't ever need Okuen. So, okay, as long as you're not buying anything more expensive than a car, you're probably okay with just this much. Okay? So, nana, sen, rokyaku, ju, kyu, man. Interesting, right? You don't, you don't say ichiju, you just say ju, right? So, nana sen, rokyaku ju, kyu man, ni sen, sanbyaku yonju. You can say that crazy long number in Japanese. Make sense? So, short term, keep doing this as much as you need to whenever you're dealing with longer numbers. Anything that goes beyond the thousands has the potential to be really confusing for 
converting between Japanese and any Western language that uses 10,000 instead of a single word like mon. Chinese, Japanese, and Korean all use variants on the Japanese system, Vietnamese too, I believe. So people who are native speakers of those languages have it easy. <laughs> but everybody else in the world finds this confusing. So now you've got a method to help yourself deal with it. Okay, so for homework, I want you guys to get started on doing these exercises. You know, remember that for, for turning in purposes at the end of the chapter, you're going to have these written out in hiragana too, even though we just did them in class. You're going to do these exercises written out in hiragana even though we'll probably do them in class as well. This one that we already did in class, yes, write it out anyway, even though we've already done it in class. It's good practice. It'll help reinforce what we're learning. And try to work through all of these through um, Roman numeral three, at least. We might get to Roman numeral four next class. Okay, so that's the goal. To Work through as, as many of those as you can because the goal is to get through all of the exercises in the textbook in class and as many of them as we have time for from the back of the book and from the workbook also. So as you're going through the workbook activities, keep, try to keep pace in the workbook with what we're currently working on as well. And if any questions come up, if you're, say, you're doing page 20, number 5, and it, it's just not good, you're not sure if you're doing it right, you have no idea how to fix it, put a like, big circle or a star or something in your notebook, bookmark it, do something so that you'll remember to ask me in class. Okay? So any, anything that's part of this current lesson that you have a question about when you're trying to do it for homework, that's fair game to bring up in class, and we'll talk about it in class. Okay? Yeah.